Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Doka Metal video. In this video we're going to talk about the concept and the mechanic of evasion and essentially uh, discuss everything you need to understand about evasion but also how the evasion mechanic works in Dokan. Now I will be including evasions and encounters. So for example, Super Saiyan 4 units who traditionally evade super attacks and counter them. Because although those are countered or counter based abilities, uh, I think they are functionally different as they evade the point of damage. So you, just, you don't take any damage. Whereas counters, the other form of counters, uh, occur when you get hit and then you perform damage. So kind of just wanted to cover those underneath the evasion category. But let's talk a little bit about evasion. So the general concept of evasion is pretty straightforward. There are four different types of evasion that you can get. So you have traditional evasion, which is a percentage chance to evade an attack. Uh, attacks and super attacks are usually specified. Most times it's including super attacks. You then have conditional evasion which is evasion that's based on a condition, uh, be it having a certain number of units on your team of a certain category or facing a certain enemy. You then have stacking evasion, which is evasion that becomes additive. And then you have countering evasion. So as mentioned before, evading the enemy's attack and countering. So first let's discuss how the hidden potential system works into all of this. So the hidden potential system evasion is 1% per level in evasion. It's super important also to understand that hidden potential evasion occurs separately to standard evasion. So if a unit has 50% evasion and 30% from the hidden potential system, they don't have an 80% chance to evade each attack. They actually have a 50% chance to evade an attack and then a separate 30% chance. So it actually works out to being a lot less than 80%, but it's just one of those things. Additive evasion is something like Entiamcha, where in this passive, if the source of the evasion is added together, then that evasion will actually occur together. So for example, with Bulma and with Yamcha, for example, Yamcha gains 10% per super attack fired. This is added to his original 50%, which means when he fires a super attack, it goes to 60, then to 70, then to 80. And for Belma, her 29% from her entrance animation is added to her 50%. We then have units like Tech Khalifla. This is an example of the conditional evasion. So Tech Khalifla has evasion based on the amount of units on her team, but she also has evasion based on the enemy she's facing. If, for example, she's facing a pure sans enemy, even if there are other categories of enemies that don't belong to either of those categories, she will still evade them as if they are a pure sans enemy. As long as one pure sans enemy is facing her, that will trigger the 100% evasion proc. Same with USS. Otherwise, her standard evasion from her passive will kick in and will apply. You then have traditional evasion. So this is just straightforward, super simple, high chance to evade, great chance to evade, medium chance to evade. And this is simple. Medium chance is 30%, great chance is 50%, 70%, or sorry, 70% is great chance, high chance is 50%. You get units that also proc evasion after firing super attacks, like strength, Super Saiyan Gohan and Goku Exchange, and Obviously, there are some additional conditions that can be attached to evasion. But generally speaking, if it's from the passive, they will always stack, unless specifically mentioned to be separate instances. And I'll show you an example of that just now. But as mentioned before, you know, the conditional requirement is different to the base passive requirement. So like for Tech Leafla, as long as a pure sans enemy is there, she'll evade all of them. If the pure sans enemy is defeated, then her evasion will drop back to being the percentage that she gains from her team. Countering and evading, very simple concept. Basically, when the super attack is fired, a unit will evade. If they evade, they will counter. A great example of kind of all of these different concepts working together is AGL SS2 Khalifla. 
she has a 50% chance to evade normal and super attacks, which means she has a, you know, the ability to just standard evade them, but she also has a 30% chance to evade and counter supers. So she has 50% technically as evasion for normal attacks, and then she has something like 61.25% chance to evade supers, basically. Because either the 30% evade and counter proc or the 50% standard passive proc can apply in the instance that the super is fired. So it's kind of interesting to understand those different concepts, but to cut a long story short, the only real big differential to understand is that the hidden potential system creates another instance for evasion. So if I went full evasion build on Khalifla, we would have three instances to proc evasion. The hidden potential system, her counter and evade, and her standard passive. So I just wanted to show some of the different types of evasion kind of in you know, their element. So we have here, for example, uh, you're about to see the counter, uh, one of the best looking counters in the game. Uh, and these are super helpful. Um, basically, every time evasion is used, it's an incredibly helpful technique. And the reason why evasion is super helpful is because it evades the entire point of damage. Uh, you don't need to factor in guard, you don't need to factor in damage reduction, you don't need to factor in defense. The attack damage never occurs. And so evasion, as a defensive mechanic, is somewhat of a risk or reward situation, of course. But because of how powerful it is, um, attack stats don't matter if they never hit. And that's why units like Inthoma or Int Yamcha or, you know, Tech Khalifla, when they pop off or when they're used in the right situation, they can seem so powerful. And it's just because of this combination of understanding that once they evade the attack, they cannot take any damage. So it's very, very interesting. And it's why I kind of wanted to touch on a bit of the finite dynamics to evasion, you know, so that people can use it correctly. Because I see a lot of people, they'll go and they'll take like an MUI Goku and he'll have 70% evasion and they'll go and they'll fully build his hidden potential system to be evasion and they'll think he'll evade every attack. That's not quite true. Uh, his evasion chance will proc or go up because obviously you're giving him a 70% chance and then a 30% chance. So it technically works out to being like an 83% chance to evade if that makes sense but it's just one of those things. You know, because you technically only have a 30% chance of the remaining 30%. So does that make sense in terms of probability? I know it can be a bit of a, a hardcore concept, but essentially it's important to understand that just giving a unit 30% uh, evasion from the hidden potential system isn't going to elevate that unit's evasion as much as you think. But it will create another instance point. So it still is technically worth it especially if units do have a ridiculously high level of evasion but the higher the unit's evasion the also less point you have in going uh, evasion in the hidden potential system so it's a bit of a, a catch-22 from a probability perspective but always you know in practice you're still increasing the chance it is just is how it is it just gets incrementally less the higher their base evasion is so yeah but that's, uh, that's getting too much into the maths. But I hope this helped you guys out in regards to understanding evasion a bit better. Uh, next video, I'll probably be going through counters so that we can understand how counters work. And yeah, but that's going to be it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Bye.